Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about what is user intent in the search space. Now, I will be the first to say that you've probably maybe seen some videos where I kind of poke fun at this a little bit. Like, how do you know what my intent is when I am the user? How do you know that I'm not trying to search for some cool new Halloween uh, concoction with all of these various things that I have in my shopping cart? And that's all still true. And I still do believe that. However, one thing that I think kind of flies under the radar um, that I did want to highlight because I do say that other thing <laughs> is the understanding that the user types something in and they expect the search engine to honor their intent. Now, what that means is when you are looking at search and someone types something in, that is specifying a size or a color or a document type or a department or maybe even a taxonomy term, they have an awareness or an understanding of your data and your data structure, or at least um, a little bit of a semblance of that uh, for whatever space that they work in, um, especially if you're talking about enterprise search. So when someone is then typing in, um, you know, I want, books from this genre, or I want documents that are specifically from this uh, project or from this time period. Time period is a very uh, specific one in this user intent conversation here, where if I give you a time period in my query, chances are I only want documents or information from that time period. Um, I've seen this a lot when it comes to um, political elections and things of that nature, where um, there you could say, you know, uh, who won the debate between this person and this person, and maybe those two people had debates in previous years or previous elections. Um, if if there is no date specified, chances are they mean currently. Again, that's a, that's an implied user intent. Um, and if they do have a specific date in mind and they say during a certain election or a certain event even, um, that's user intent. And so when you're in the search space, the user is assuming the search engine can parse and then identify and then apply what is being identified to the search results. So that could be a date filter, that could be a taxonomy filter, um, it could be a qualifier that uh, the search is only being conducted in this department or on these types of documents. So that is another type of user intent. And a lot of search engines do not, and when I say this, you know, if you are doing um, enterprise search or even if you're building your own search for a product, i.e. not the big search engines most people use in their day-to-day -day lives like Google and, and that sort of thing. Um, Typically a search engine uh, out of the box does not do this. Sometimes there is some parsing and sometimes you have to add things like, um, like a taxonomy lookup service where um, the parsing of the query will specifically look for taxonomy terms, but adding that plus date plus department, which I guess can be a taxonomy if you apply it that way, um, plus um, any other like sizing and colors and other things if you're you know working in a product space those are all parameters that are too complicated to put into a taxonomy lookup service and so that's where you know doing graph embeddings or you know doing some vector space analysis or adding some additional machine learning um, on top is going to be incredibly helpful now in my past in the pre LLM days, I used BART uh, to do this. And um, so that also means that you can use LLMs to help in this situation. Um, so all of this is not even talking about like the semantic search where somebody is trying to figure out um, if I ask a question, the user is intending it is a question. And so they would expect that an answer is then retrieved. Most search engines, again, do not do that out of the box. Now with LLMs, it, it's easy and easy, easy enough um, to add that functionality. It used to be much 
uh, harder of a lift to do true Q&A. You don't always need it. Honestly, like look at your search logs because if nobody's asking questions, chances are they don't expect your search engine to honor that intent so you don't have to go that full mile. But being able to look at your search logs is incredibly important to understanding your user's intent. Now, there's a lot of privacy concerns too when, when dealing with search logs. So that's where, again, you can use something like synthetic data where you are perhaps using um, anonymous uh, behavior from users and then creating a synthetic uh, data set off of that. I'll put some links down below if you want to learn more about synthetic data sets or I can make a whole video on it if you are interested. Um, but that basically means that the, the actual humans that are behind the data are completely removed at that point. Um, you can also create synthetic data on um, similar uh, applications. So if you have some um, enterprise search, you can use maybe a different enterprise search that um, has nothing to do with your customers. Um, maybe it's an open source, maybe it's uh, from a research lab where the uh, participants have gone through a very, very thorough IRB institutional review board, ma making sure that the research was ethically done. Um, that will help you make sure that you are, you know, crossing um, all of the uh, checks and balances on making sure that you are looking at user data uh, ethically and responsibly. And now that there's legislature, legislation out there on this, you are following the laws on those things. So all of that goes into what are your users actually doing? The other thing you can think about if um, you are working with uh, end users, and again, you want to keep a lot of that privacy and that sort of thing um, intact is getting at the user's intent. You can do surveys, right? So um, you can use Mechanical Turk. Um, you can um, have a list of folks that, again, you you don't have to work at a university or even be in academia to use IRB, by the way. Go ask your local university. You can do IRB training and you can be certified in that um, IRB for that university. And then any research you do would be submitted to that board. And then they would look at it from an ethical perspective. So please think about maybe doing that because if you were sending surveys out, um, again, you want to make sure that that user um, is being honored. And then there you can, you can generate uh, more of that user behavior to understand some of the things that they might be intending. Now, if you do that, you do want to think about the um, sample size and the population that you are looking at for those surveys because you don't want to just send this to users that would never have the same kind of behavior as your end user. So you, again, you want to be careful with that and uh, read up on ethnographic studies um, because that that's pretty important. And also, I think I have a few videos um, that I'll try to put um, somewhere so uh, associated with this video so you can go and see a little bit of, of how I've done this in my past. Um, but all of this is getting to the real uh, the user intent, but it's the, what is the user behavior and what is their expectations? So it still kind of is nail on chalkboard when I hear, ah, oh, search user intent, put user intent. I know user intent identification in, in search. Still kind of bothers me because really what we're talking about is um, what is the end user's expectation based on the behavior that they have presented, which is, I have done this search. I have done this um, authentication and personalization. And I, you know, all of these things that I as a user have done, I now have expectations based on that. And that's really what you're trying to get at when you're talking about search uh, and user intent. So I know this was a quick video. Um, it's something that's kind of been weighing on my mind because um, you know, you learn things as, as you grow. And this is one of those things that I have learned, I would say in the last few years where um, it still is a little nails on chalkboard to me because again, you can never truly know what a user really expects um, unless you personally ask that individual and that's not possible in most cases. But there are ways to kind of simulate what folks are um, entering, which is the behavior part, and then what their expectations are after the fact. And again, doing that in an ethically uh, and responsibly, uh, in responsible way um, is always the best approach to go with because otherwise um, you're going to get yourself in a mess of trouble and, and not do so well. 
All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.